Hi, my name is Jessica Vasquez, in case you didn't know, and I'm here to talk to you about Pixar movies. Who has never seen a Pixar movie? If you have not, then you're kind of crazy. But today I'm going to introduce you to the topic of the Pixar theory. It's a theory created by John Groney, and he explains the theory as all Pixar movies are on the same timeline. And what that means is that it starts with the movie Brave, even though it recently came out. It starts with the movie Brave, and it ends with Monsters, Inc. As I said before, Brave is the first movie in the Pixar theory and it dates all the way back to the 14th, 15th century. And it's Merida is introduced to the Will of the Wisps. The Will of the Wisps holds magic, that magic later then turns her mother into a bear. And later the magic leads to the birth of superheroes. So this leads to The Incredibles, where superheroes maintain the world. And Buddy, a wannabe superhero, invents two things to try to demise superheroes. One is the AI bots also known as the Omnidroid, and then Zero Point Energy. This is a pivotal moment where we see machines eradicating their only threat, supers. So now toys are coming to life due to Syndrome's craziness, and we see that the toys have conducted their own set of rules where they have to follow because what they thrive on is human love. That's where they get their energy from. These toys later discover what happens to them when they feel isolated by their humans. This leads to Toy Story 2 where they see the dangers for them being isolated by humans. For example, Jessie resents her owner, Emily, for abandoning her. Resentment towards humans weren't only done by toys, they were also done by animals as well. That's where Finding Nemo comes in. And there we see fish are incredibly advanced. We discover that humans have been polluting the earth and have been experimenting on animals. Dory was an experiment made by humans and that's why she's always forgetful. There are signs of regretments growing towards the humans for polluting the earth, for stealing fish, for caging them. Animals begin to be more cautious around humans and they even grow more human-like qualities. And that's where we see Ratatouille, Remy the Rat, displays his love for cooking and even more human-like qualities, such as walking on his hind legs, reading, cooking, and this is where we see the first interaction between humans and animals. Haha, -ha, you thought I forgot about Toy Story 3. But no, three years later, a lot of toys have had interaction with humans. The character of Lotso gets introduced, and Lotso, as you've probably seen, hates humans. They, they physically abuse and, and abandon him. So because he despises them so much, he tries to take care of his own, and this provides yet another reason why machines and objects are ready to take over. So Carl and Allie write to Andy trying to tell him to get rid of his toys because the animosity between humans and toys are coming and that's why they're planning to live in solitude. Which gives us the next movie, Up. Carl is forced to give up his house to this big old corporation by and large, b and This is a little bit foreshadowing but by and large is the reason why reasons for all the pollutions and the reason why in the not too distant future that life is ceased to existing on Earth because of the results of technological override. So anyways, back to Up. Carl discovers the communications he, ha he can have with animals and the bitterness that they have. And Charles Munz effectively trains an army of dogs and this is the tipping point between animals and humans. Years later, the uprising between animals and humans begin. But who do you think won that war? So when animals rose up against humans to stop pollution, machines helped humans, which in turn have them won the war. However, since the machines helped humans, it tipped off an unbalance between Earth, on Earth between humans and machines. So the machines and BNL Corporation had to send the humans into space on a spaceship called the Axiom. All the other machines were left on the Earth to populate and run the world. Those machines being cars. But you're probably wondering, is cars really on Earth? Like, what if it's on another planet? Because in Cars 2, they go to Europe and Japan, and it shows the same planet as all the other Pixar movies. And also, there are no humans in Cars or Cars 2. The world at this time ends up, being, ends up with an energy crisis. As you know, Cars use oil, so where's all the oil coming from? So then we see All in All Corporation was using green energy as a catalyst for a fuel war in order to turn cars away from the alternative energy source. All in All was run by b and which and then polluted the earth because of the use of oil, which made it unsustainable for life, which leads us to our next movie. Wally. -E. Earth has become inhabitable for hundreds of years because of B and L. Wall is the only machine left on Earth after it ran out of resources. 
Why did he survive? Because of his fascination for humans. The machines on the Axiom discover a sense of purpose, and that's the human dependence of them. Wally, the robot Jesus, and his love, appropriately named Eve, save the human race and start a new beginning on Earth. During the credits of Wally, we see the shoe containing the last of plant life, and we see it grow into this big, mighty tree. That same big, almighty tree is seen in a bug's life. Ants are sturdier as a result of evolution and mutated genes. You might have noticed another ant telling Flick not to leave the island in case of birds and other insects, but never humans, because at this time, humans aren't a threat. They don't really have to worry about humans. But later in the distant, distant future, like 1400 years, these animals have evolved into these dominant species where we see in Monsters University. Hundreds of years after Wally, -E, animals started changing due to the radiation caused by BNL. These animals have evolved into monsters and wiped off human existence off of the face of the earth. So at Monsters University, they falsely taught the monsters that humans were toxic and from a different dimension. This was because monsters were afraid of alternating history and probably wiping out the existence of monsters altogether. Monsters and machines didn't realize the mistake of getting rid of humans until it was too late. They eventually realized humans was, get this, the source of their energy. Machines help solve this by letting monsters use doors as a way to time travel to human generations. And this leads us to Boo. Boo does get through. She discovers this whole other world. She, she falls in love with Sully. She's in love with Sully and this whole new world. And by the end of the movie, you can see that she tries to go back to the world. but. But she can't. But if I were Boo, I would make it my life's obsession to find out Sully. And so she does. So years and years and years, she discovers what? Magic. And she uses that magic to travel back in time into the dark ages. And yes, Boo is the witch from Brave. What, you don't think so? Well, one thing, the witch is obsessed with bears. And bears, um, Sully kind of looks like a bear. So that's one thing. Also, the wood carving of the Pizza Planet truck. And how would you know a Pizza Planet truck even exists if you are from the 14th century? But again, this isn't my theory. It's a theory of John Groney. If you want to look it up for yourselves, try to prove me wrong. I believe in it. It's pretty awesome.